Yep, indeed. Look, while uh, those sort of weighty matters have been playing out, um, I, I want to turn to the bathrooms at the Department of Prime Minister <laughs> and Cabinet. So, Chris Yulman, political editor at the Nine Network, tweeted this while I've been on air this afternoon. This is a bathroom sign at the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, down the road from where I'm at Parliament House. If you can't read the fine print, it says, PM and C, the Department is committed to staff inclusion and diversity. Please use the bathroom that best fits your gender identity. Right, within the hour, the Prime Minister himself is on radio, on 2GB with Ben Fordham. Uh, he gets asked about this. Here's what he says. Honestly, this is why we call it the Canberra bubble. Um, it's ridiculous. I don't think this is necessary. I think people can work out which room to use. What's your concern? Well, I just don't think it's necessary. I mean, it's, it's just... It's over the top. It's just... You don't need to do this stuff. It's... It's just political correctness over the top. It's just not necessary. And we've got a big clear view about this, and I'm, I'm sure this will be sorted. So what, the signs are going to go? No, that's what I expect. So a pretty clear message from Scott Morrison that this is ridiculous. Uh, someone else has pointed out uh, on Twitter, I'll show you this, uh, for years in Parliament House, where we work and all the politicians, including the Prime Minister, work these bathroom signs, uh, which are also gender diverse, have been prominent for a long time. The bathrooms here are, um, as I say, you can use whichever one you want. It doesn't have the words that the, the one down the road at the department has. But, Janine, I don't know, there's a couple of things here. Um, why is the Prime Minister weighing in on this? Well, I guess he's asked by Ben Fordham too, but why is he reacting in the way that he is? Is there a particular problem with saying you can use the bathroom that best suits your gender identity? Oh, look, I, I hate the whole thing. I mean, as a girl, we like to have, you know, people who aren't standing up at the bathroom, so I don't know which way you identify and whether I upset anyone, but I kind of like gender bathrooms. But when he talks about the camera bubble, does he not look at the signs? I mean, I must admit, when you showed the second sign, I didn't realise that's what that meant. I, I, I hadn't put the two and two together. But has this never been brought to his attention? Did they just go up yesterday? That's the question on this. Why is he offended now and why weren't they before? And if they've been going along, what's the issue? I don't know. I don't know. But he's uh, pretty upset about it now and I suspect those signs <laughs> will probably change uh, down the road. Maybe not here at Parliament, though. That would uh, prompt a whole other bun fight. Um, also today, we uh, saw the, well, the draft exposure bill, it's called, on religious discrimination. There's a bit of consultation still to come on all of this, a bit of work to get bipartisan support behind it as well. But at first blush, this, as Christian Porter says, is about protecting, shielding those of religious faith against discrimination rather than empowering them, giving them the sword to say, do whatever they like uh, without danger of in breaching someone else's um, anti-discrimination provisions. What do you think about where he's landed on this, Janine, and, and I guess the way the government is mounting this argument as to why we need these laws? Look, it's a very hard one, as we know, for them. They've been kicking the can down the road. They've had inquiries. Um, I, as I always say, I don't think there was enough argument or there hadn't been enough presented to show why there should be radical changes. I think thus far, and I haven't seen all the reaction yet, but thus far they seem to be, um, you know, skating along the middle doing well with enough little tweaks that will work without throwing the baby out with the bathwater and causing enough changes. Um, I'm waiting to see what the issues will be. From a business point of view, um, the, there's all, often been a distinction between small business and big business. That's going to be very clear there. I think there's an interesting one about the fact you can discriminate if you can prove that it caused you commercial damage. I can see that's going to be a lawyer's picnic, as we could say. Um, proving well, just, that just is going to be that, interesting. So that in, the, in the case of Rugby Australia, they would have to actually prove that Israel Flowers tweet or I guess before that, the reason why they're putting in place the restriction on employees tweeting any of this stuff is because it's going to cost them sponsors. Now, I assume they're going to need some documentary evidence to show that, you know, their sponsors, Qantas, whoever it is, are going to walk away uh, if, if people start tweeting that sort of thing. Is that where this ends up? Well, you'd presume so. so. You'd have to show commercial disadvantage from a reputational point of view. But if somebody tweets something or somebody does something that you think might have and it hasn't happened yet, does that mean you can't do anything until the damage is actually caused and you can show that you've had damaged? I mean, that's where I say it's going to be a very interesting argument on that one. It's, it really is a bit of a shot at 
companies taking social positions, right, on, uh, on things like gay marriage and so on, isn't it? Um, if, if they are required to establish what the financial loss to them is going to be uh, by stopping their own workers from saying, doing things that are going to offend, that puts a lot more onus on them to back up why they're taking the positions they are. Well, that's exactly right. But equally, many companies have mission statements. They have a, a culture that they might want to... Uh, that's their marketing advantage. It's their competitive advantage. So how do you prove if this is what we think um, is the image we want to present and that gives us a marketing advantage, how do you then prove a commercial disadvantage if you didn't... It's a very grey area and, as I say, it's going to put a lot of onus on the companies and have a lot of lawyers having to work it out and prove it. So I think that's one that might be up for a lot of discussion on it. But, look, it, it, and I thought Labor played it OK. Obviously, the Greens were against it, as they would be straight away. But Labor said they'll look at it. They're not showing bipartisan support yet. But they didn't immediately jump to say no. So, look, in this issue, it's so fraught, there's always going to be somebody who's not happy. The other issue I think that's going to come up is an interesting one is overriding the Tasmanian state legislation, which they're upset about because they said they were assured it wouldn't over, uh, override states' rights there or state legislation. So that's an interesting one too. Yeah. I look, yeah, I think you're right. And there's already, you know, uh, pressure from religious leaders in the, in, in the other direction for change here. This is the beginning of the formal consultation process, I suspect. And, and another one that's going to be very fraught is the patients' rights issue in hospitals that are run by religious um, organisations on how yeah, far you yeah. can go on using your religious beliefs in it. That's going to be a very important one given uh, Australia's Medicare system.